I had a chance to sit down with one of the Clinton Global Initiative Greenhouse's inaugural class of social impact entrepreneurs and startups. Erica Plyvee and Natalie Ocean are the CEO and COO of MedHall. This Memphis-based tech company provides low-income and elderly patients a safe and easy way to get to their non-emergency medical appointments. Um, so I'm Natalie Ocean. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for MedHall. Um, my background is, well, I'm originally from New Jersey, um, and my family's been in Memphis for about 10 years, which is where I met Erica when I was in grad school. Um, but I, my background is in healthcare management and administration with a quality okay. concentration. So I bring that lens to the company for Erica. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and I'm Erica Plybier, founder and CEO of MedHall. Uh, my background prior to this was in clinical and research informatics, which wow. is essentially building software solutions for hospitals, clinics, academic research institutions. And I'm from Mississippi, uh, the Mississippi Delta to be exact, and that has impacted a lot of my work. That's amazing. And what, so who, you started MedHall. Could yes. you tell us just what is MedHall? Yeah. MedHall is a uh, an organization that helps healthcare providers like hospitals, um, health systems, pharma organizations understand and solve transportation barriers for their mm -hmm. patients with the most vulnerable needs or their most overlooked populations. Okay, is it maybe for someone who doesn't have a caretaker at home to take them to, is it like doctor's appointments or care facilities? Is that what it's for? Yeah, so mm -hmm. it could be a, a multitude of things. We typically say that we're building transportation solutions for folks with complex physical or social needs. Okay. So those are usually low income patients, mm -hmm. elderly patients, patients with disabilities, or even folks in rural communities. Mm -hmm. And so where was it in your journey? Because I hear your, your academia story. Yeah. What was it when you were at your work or while you were studying that made you go, where is this? Where is this? Because I feel like entrepreneurship is you see a problem and you create a solution. Yeah. What was that problem? And does this happen simultaneously? Did it happen to one of you when you brought someone on? How, how was that? Yeah, I'll let you go first and then I'll. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll You'll corroborate the right. story if she's yeah. telling the truth. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there were a few things that, with my experience in clinical and research informatics, I spent the, you know, a, a decade almost helping healthcare providers implement technology that can make a clinical workflow a lot easier, whatever the clinical workflow mm -hmm. was, whether that is recruiting a patient for a clinical trial or finding a better way to document uh, medications in a, a electronic medical record. And so I've, I've always been obsessed with using technology to make a workflow in healthcare a lot easier. I fell in love with transportation because my grandmother was a type two diabetic, mm -hmm. double leg amputee and my family struggled tremendously with getting her to all of her doctor's appointments. My mom was my grandmother's primary transporter, but my mom is also a full-time teacher, so yeah. trying to juggle all the doctor's appointments with her work mm -hmm. schedule. Uh, we did not have an easy way to to find transportation for my grandmother and she was a and she was a double leg amputee, so she was wheelchair bound. Yeah. So it required a little bit more of like a specialized transporter Whoa. because this would be someone that be that would lifting, be lifting her yeah. in and out of, mm -hmm. of a vehicle, and we just it was just so frustrating and it was it was weird because it was like this is you know this was uh, back in in twenty uh, early 2010s, 2013 or so, and we just thought like in this day and age yeah. there would seem like there would be an easy way to do this, especially because Uber and Lyft Uber, were yeah. around. Yeah. Um, you know, this was my family in Greenwood, Mississippi. Okay. So I, I just thought, hey, this is just a problem they're having in the Mississippi Delta. Clearly, this happens nowhere else. Like nobody else across the country is having this <laughs> Definitely issue. not. <laughs> and it wasn't until I was working for a health system uh, in Memphis that I saw the problem from the healthcare provider's lens. Okay. So they needed to discharge patients who may have been disabled or a patient that may live in a rural community, but that patient didn't have anyone to pick them up. Or, they, or that person that would pick, be picking them up didn't have the appropriate vehicle to transport them. And so this meant that the patient may even need to stay overnight just because they don't have a ride. Oh, and those are extra costs, costs yes. for the yes. hospitals, yeah. And so I was like, huh, this is kind of like the reverse problem of what my family was having. Like yeah. I, I didn't even think about it that way. And then as I started to ask uh, other healthcare administrators, I have a lot of friends and colleagues that are healthcare administrators, so directors or CEOs, COOs of hospitals or um, academic or um, sorry medical facilities. 
And I just started to ask like, hey, what issues are you having with transportation? And they're like, oh my God, let me tell you about all the issues we're having. <laughs> you know, it takes too long to find a transportation uh -huh. provider. You know, we're spending time on the phone. Even when we book the ride, you know, there's so many errors. They show up at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. They show up at the wrong place. They don't bring the appropriate vehicle. And I'm like, well, how are you booking the rides? They're like, we're just calling, you know. So the booker, which is usually like a, a nurse, a clinical social worker, they're looking at a different set of data than the transportation company. Mm -hmm. There was no, um, there was no uh, uh, mutual portal that the two parties were looking at. Oh. And so that is one area right there that creates uh, you know, manual errors is our thing when humans with humans and it's perfectly fine. But um, I, my will started turning and I'm like, how yeah. can we make this a lot easier? So um, that's a, a long story. <laughs> but uh, it started off as a personal, a personal issue that my family had. Um, wow. I was very familiar with building technology for healthcare providers. I understand how um, healthcare providers think, I understand the workflows, I understand the challenges of implementing technology and in healthcare settings. Um, and this was something I wanted to build for my family. And yeah. then I learned that hundreds of millions of folks also face the same problem across mm -hmm. our country. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and let Natalie <laughs> yeah. share. Yeah, so with all of that, I was, I was always on board with Erica's idea before the company even got started. Um, but with my background in uh, the academic medical center environment, because that's typically where I was able to uh, practice, uh, practice, I'm not a clinician, but um, perform my work as a hos hospital administrator. Um, and I saw a lot, especially working in the quality sector, where we talk about patient safety and risk and how do we um, kind of manage and make more efficient the discharge process like Erica was speaking to. We saw a lot that transportation kept coming up. Um, and I also worked for an, inst an organization that um, provided transportation for their patients. Um, through the Medicaid benefit that the patients have. So again, seeing what already exists and seeing about learning about the problem yeah. to the extent of, I didn't realize how many millions of families like Erica's were dealing with this issue, what that meant for the organization, um, what that meant for the patient clinically and financially as far as what they'd have to contribute to kind of addressing this barrier. So I've always been a, um, a component, a proponent and an advocate of access to care and how do we eliminate disparities, address the disparities, yeah. call them what they are and provide solutions that'll help fix them. And this is just one, it feels like such a big piece, but it really is just one small facet that we're hoping to um, make a ripple. And how, what was your meet cue? What, what, what was your little meeting story? How did you two meet? Yeah, so when I was in grad school, we both were part of um, a healthcare association, so a National Association of Health Service Executives, uh, NACI is the acronym. And Erica was already on the committee, but I was still in grad school. So I, would, I was mm -hmm. coming in from the perspective of the student. Um, I did a case competition. Annually, they have a conference and they, a case competition is part of that conference. And I competed and the team at Memphis um, and Erica was like, oh, whenever I get a team, I want you to be on it. Nice. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what kind of team. <laughs> it's called <you're>... identifying talent, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. They're like, she's got it. Right. I need her and yeah. that's how it's going to work. Yeah. yeah. And we served uh, through this organization, mm -hmm. NASI, we served on a committee committee uh, for scholarships, yep. we have a partner that provides scholarships to minority students pursuing a career in healthcare. Oh, and uh, just Natalie's work ethic, I was just <laughs> like, you know, she was just so committed to getting things done. And those are the folks that that I work well with. This is hard work. Yes. You know, it is, you know, it's for the greater good. Um, but this is very hard work. Mm -hmm. And we need folks who are very high performance. Yeah. Um, and I, I was just always always obsessed with with Natalie's work ethic. And at that time, I had no idea I would ever start a company. I was thinking like, oh, if I have a team yeah. at a hospital, like I would recruit yeah. her. I'm like, you, I would want her on my team. This was like eight years ago. Wow. So way before the company even started. Yeah. I could feel the trust between you two. Oh yeah. yeah. Can you trust. like, yeah. can you guys read each other's minds without talking? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. sitting at me and you're like, yeah. you're yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Anyways, thank you so much. That was like, just like a little snippet. I, I want to continue this conversation. Yeah. yeah. And I At Global Partners for Development, our mission is to advance community-led initiatives that improve education and public health in East Africa. We envision a world in which every East African community has the capacity to implement dynamic, sustainable solutions to the challenges they face. To learn more, visit gpfd.org.